So the Porsche 911 GT3 guys is the higher performance version of the Porsche 911 sports car. So basically this was the higher performance models that they started to create in 1973, the 911 RS. And the GT3 is named after the Federation Internationale de Automobile, the FIA. So there's a GT3 class in which it was designed to compete. So this little bad boy, so in these races they had to recreate a, a road car as well for some of these. There had to be cars that had been produced as road cars and then they could be hopped up in the in the races as well. Because I know that was the case with the um, 911 GT1. And this particular one is obviously the Batmobile. And this has been licensed from uh, Warner Brothers, TM and DC Comics. This is by the longest Mini Z car I've seen that's not an Overlander. I don't know what wheelbase that is. So unfortunately a lot of the information on this car is in Japanese. <laughs> so I don't really know what's going on. This isn't a real car but I can see that it says not to 60 in 3.7 seconds. So if, is that if this really was a car, it would be going that fast. So... Yeah. Now there's a few optional parts that you can get with this as well. And the machine gun that sits on the bonnet or the hood, that's an optional part. But I think I've seen that in a little bag. I'll have a look. I think I have. And then the wheel caps that have the Batman logo on, that's also an optional part. And you can tell that this, I mean, I couldn't get into the box guys, it was that. Okay guys, so here we've got the Lotus Exige. This is the Cup Edition and this is in red. So this is a Cup 260 in red. And this is an 86mm rear motor mounted uh, body shell and it's small. <laughs> it's got the five spoke black wheels. And this is available, I've seen it, in, well I've got it in white. Got it in red now and orange. Orange, I have noticed this isn't really easy to come by, but um, white is, and red kind of is as well. So this car was launched in the year 2000, and it had the Rover K-Series engine, which is VHPD, which means very high performance derivative. And they tuned it up to get 177 brake horsepower out of it, which is pretty cool. And then a track spec version which went up to 192 brake horsepower. And the top speed of this car in real life was 136 miles an hour. Okay guys, here we've got the Lamborghini Countach. And this is the LP500S in black. Now there's a bit of discrepancy about is this really the LP500S? Because it was, it was supposed to be called the LP500R. That was produced in 1970, 1977, so I don't know if that's uh, something to do with trademarking or Kyoshi won't get it. Or... And th there's only supposed to be one of these in the entire world, which is really crazy because um, I think it was it had its custom paint job. Um, it was taken away and had a custom paint job done to it. It was imported to Japan in 1977 and they painted the black with the white graphic lines. Um, and they're supposed to only be one, so yeah, that's crazy. So anyhow, this is um, Black Nero Tenebra, and this is first produced in 2005, and then again 2007, and it's supposed to be very difficult to find. Saying that, so guys, I did a few which I call street machines, and basically I just took a McLaren, the. 12C GT3, it was a green metallic version and I just basically carbon fibered it and did it my own way. When I got to Mini Z's you see, I'd been in 1.8 scale cars and I was used to spraying up my own cars and putting decals on them and carbon fibering them and obviously affecting the performances, this and that. So when I came to Mini Z's I brought that with me. So the first few Mini Z's I got, I just like give it a street look and that's what I did with this. So I chained the wheels out, put on performance kind of looking wheels that match the carbon fibre 
carbon fiber, the bonnet, the roof, the real spoiler, spoiler the sides, uh, and even carbon fiber, a, a section going down to the actual boot. So, you know, I just wanted to make it my own little baby. This Ferrari body shell, guys, has become increasingly difficult to get hold of. This was stock. Uh, I didn't like it stock. I like the black and gold kind of look, so I kind of got the wheels and got a gold marker, coloured the wheels in, did the grills on the bonnet and on the lower part of the front of the car and just coloured it in, did it my way. So, yeah, this is when I got into Mini Z's and I thought, mm mm, too bland. I want to change it up a little bit. So, you know, I thought, gold look kind of cool and on the grills it looks kind of nice on the back so yeah so that's one I don't think I've shown you guys before it's become rare you know I've only seen one that's in Europe that's come up for sale so this one definitely is rare because it's been changed a little bit but yeah just thought I'd give that a quick whiz show you that one guys before I get started and put away but I do want to have that in the street races so the street races guys have started them off with the Fast and Furious. We're going to move on to other street performance cars. So we'll be moving on to like the R35s, we'll be moving on to the Civics. And as we work our way through them, the Subarus, then we'll start popping in the real supercars. So the likes of Ferraris and McLarens, they'll be coming into that as well. So yep, so I've got a few more of them that I want to do. And hopefully they'll be getting better as well. Um, I'm looking to pull the stops out. I've been holding back. I've got a lot of things that I could put into them. But I'm just waiting for the views to climb up a little bit. And then I will start to unload <laughs> some real footage. But at the moment I'm just hoping to get a bit more interest. Before I invest so much time into them. But yeah, beautiful car. I did like the old shape. And you can't beat the sound of a VTEC. That's got a, you know... A big exhaust on. I had under the Ford GT, under that Carrera, and it's not a perfect fit, but that looks kind of mean. It kind of goes with the trim on the actual car itself. I like that look. You know, I know, <laughs> I like the way that it's jacked up, it won't stay like that, but I like that on the back anyway. I like the car that dip a little bit, um, but I think they go with that colour scheme pretty well. And the silver one doesn't look as good as that black. That black looks proper crazy. And I'm going to put some little figures in that car. <laughs> so that's going to be a vid that's going to be coming, guys, yeah? It's going to be gangsters. <laughs> Lego gangsters. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. Now, the only downside is there's no light fitting on that car, which is a shame. The silver one was similar as well. Um, these aren't made by Kyosho because I haven't ever seen these come up. Um, in the auto scales um, websites or anything like that, but it has the Mini Z mount, you know the uh, the holder for the chassis mount. It has that. So are they eye waver cars that they were made for? I'm not really sure, and they seem a little bit narrower. Okay, guys. So here we've got the Toyota GT1 TS020. Number three. It's not totally rare, but has become much more rare. Don't you just love the way their mirrors are like positioned in different places? <laughs> I've just noticed that's crazy. One's on the actual fender, one's just below it, so that's interesting. Right, so yeah, guys. Has become more harder to get hold of. When I got into Mini Z's, you could find these 10 to a penny, they were like everywhere. And now I could, I've probably seen two. So, and this is the racer's preference for Mini Z's. A lot of the guys who are racing with Mini Z's are using them cars.